Okay, hey everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about partial products multiplication. Partial products multiplication is a technique that we use in class to explore place value and grouping. Because that's really what we need to be concerned about when we're doing these big numbers is what number is in what place value. And just understanding that all we're doing in multiplication is just making groups. It's a way to speed up your addition. So place value and groups. This is not a technique that I'm going to want them to use the rest of their life. Down the road, as we work through and I see that we understand how multiplication works, we start moving towards the traditional method. And I'll tell them on their tests, I want to see traditional. On their homeworks, I want to see traditional when we get there. We call it Roy and Destroy in here. And if you watch one of my video clips, you'll see how Roy and Destroy works. But let's start off just talking about partial products and showing the how these pieces work together. So as they're younger, they start off something like 5 times 7, and they already know 5 times 7 is 35. We've just been working on extended math facts, so let's extend it. 50 times 7, and we'll stop here and go, well, what is 50 times 7? And a bunch of kids will yell, well, 350, I know that one. 5 times 7, 35 with a 0. And I go, okay, you learned the technique, but what does it mean? Now we've got to stop and think for a minute. Well, let's look back. 7 times 5. Well, what does that mean? I know it's 35, but what does that mean? Well, 7 times 5 means 7 groups of 5 or 5 groups of 7. Same thing here. We have 7 groups of 50 or 50 groups of 7. We're just making groups and we're counting groups. That's all we're doing. This is just a shortcut. If I have 7 groups of 50, I have 350. Let's take it another step further. and get into our first partial products problem. It's very easy when we have that zero on the end. Here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Now I need to do seven groups of 53. And a lot of kids right away are going to start thinking, well, seven times five is 35, and we just put the three there. We can't just drop a three in the place. We can do all kinds of fun tricks in math with zeros. We learned about that in the decimal unit. You can't just drop threes and fours and sevens. You have to do something with the number. So we're going to talk about this a little bit, and we're going to break it into pieces. And I tell them, that's what this word means. Partial products means part multiplication answers. We're going to find two answers. We're going to put them together. So let's take a look here. 53 times 7. Let's do the first part. Let's just look at the ones place. Let's do seven groups of three. And notice I'm not saying seven times three right now. I'm saying seven groups of three. 7 groups of 3, that's going to be 21. And I give my little, myself a little bit of space because I'm the teacher and I know what's coming. I know that this next number is going to be a little bit bigger and I want to keep things lined up on my grid paper. Now I look at the next one and a lot of kids will go 7 times 5 and I have to stop them because we're talking about place value and groups. It's not 5. What is it? It's in the tens place. And inevitably somebody's going to get the ball rolling for me and tell me, that's a 50. And I'll say exactly. So we're going to do seven groups of 50. Seven groups of 50. And because they've been working on their extended facts, they know this one. 350. Three hundred and seventy one. And that makes sense. If they're not sure if it makes sense, the real easy way that we're going to do this, and we're going to check in class, we're going to do ballpark estimates. I'll say 53 is closest to being 50, and we'll leave the 7 because we know how to do this fact. My answer should be around 350, and we'll talk. Is that pretty close? Yeah, that's pretty close. That answer makes sense, and we'll say that a lot in multiplication and division and everything. Does it make sense? So that's the first part of partial products, but that's still not too difficult on us because we're only doing a 2 versus 1. And a lot of the kids in here are pretty good at understanding about 2 versus 1. Now we're going to get to the big dog, the one that you're working towards for fourth grade. Can you do the 2 versus 2? And different teachers do it different ways. Sometimes they talk about it being dancing and having partners. I like wrestling, so I'm going to say we're going to talk about wrestling matches. So we're going to set a problem up just like that. 
and we're going to say 53 times 27. This is the big problem they've been working towards with all this math fact knowledge that they've been gaining all year long. So we're going to say, okay, on a wrestling match, we're going to have two teams. We're going to do a tag team. If I'm getting beat up, I reach out and they tag my hand and somebody else jumps in for me and they wrestle the other people. So we've got two teams here. We've got the team below here and we've got the team on top. And we'll talk about who these team members are first. And I usually have a number that the kids will wear on their chest. So somebody will be seven, and we'll tape the seven to their chest, and they're on the seven tag team. And then I'll say, who is this, before I even show them the number, just so they tell me that that is not a two, it is a 20. And I'll give them the 20. So I've got seven on somebody's chest, I've got a 20 on somebody else's, and then they'll know for the next set, who else? And I'll give them a different colored tag, and they'll be the three. And then their partner will be the 50. So I've got 50 and 3 versus 20 and 7. And now we build our wrestling matches. And we'll talk about how both of these guys have to wrestle both of those other guys, but they're never going to wrestle each other. We're never going to have a wrestling match where 20 is versus 7. We're never going to have that. Okay, And that kind of makes sense. Well, yeah, teammates aren't going to wrestle each other. That doesn't make any sense. Now let's start building groups. So we're going to build the groups just like we did before and start building these problems. 7 times 3 was our first one in the last problem. Let's do it again. 7 times 3 is 21. And we talk about what is 7 times 3? It's 7 groups of 3. Okay, and that makes sense. Now we'll do 7 groups of 50. Seven groups of 50, well that's 350. And I'm doing my best to keep everything lined up. And sometimes I'll tell the kids as soon as they get a number to start dropping the wall. Because we want all those numbers to be touching that wall. If they're all touching the wall, we're going to keep everything lined up. Okay, we sevens wrestled both people. Sevens done seven groups of three and seven groups of 50. Now it's 20's turn. 20 tags in, 20 has to wrestle three. So we're going to do 20 groups of 3. That's going to be 60. Now our last big huge problem is going to be the 20 groups of 50. And I picked a tricky one for you here, so let's make sure that we take our time thinking about this one. 2 times 5 is 10. And now we need to add on two extra zeros. One, two. You've got to be careful when you use tens. We've got our four parts here. Now we just put everything together. One, 11, 13. Three down, carry the one. Four, one, one, two, three. And your answer is 1,431. And what it will do with the kids is well, now we ask, does this make sense? And I'll say, well, let's double check. It's pretty easy to do. 53, let's round that to 50. 27, that's going to round to 30. Well, look at that. It's an extended multiplication fact, and we've done these before. 3 times 5 is 15 with two extra zeros. So we're expecting our answer to be around 1,500 and we're pretty close. We're within range. One of the things I want to point out before we shut down the lesson is how to help your children understand how many wrestling matches they should have. And that's just looking at the digits we have here. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four. So we have four digits. There's two on this team. There's two on this team. Two times two equals four. And that works for any problem. If it was a 3 times 2, we should expect 6 parts. If it's a 2 times 1, we should expect 2 parts. And that's kind of a way to let them know how many wrestling matches to expect down below. So as you can see, this is a lot more work than I want kids to do. And we'll start comparing these different techniques when we get to Roy and Destroy and a couple other things. And that'll prove to them why I don't want them to use this on their homework. But just to think about it as all we're doing is making groups, that's what you do in multiplication. We're figuring out how many groups. When we get to Roy and Destroy the traditional method, they'll see 
This is just a shortcut. It's going to speed you up because as you get older, we can't spend 15, 20 minutes on every single problem. That is partial products, and I hope you enjoyed it.